Hello, my friends. Let's read chapter four of Mr. Penguin and the Lost Treasure. Chapter four, closed until further notice. The Museum of Extraordinary Objects was a large dusty building with lots of tall columns and twirly bits of stonework. It sat on the corner of West 28th Street and near the Park Avenue and looked when viewed from one of the surrounding skyscrapers like a dinosaur. Mr. Penguin and Colin hoofed it down the road as fast as they could in the rain, weaving in and out of people hopping around puddles, being terribly busy and important. Eventually, Mr. Penguin and Colin rounded a corner and were just making a dash for the gigantic wrought iron museum gates when they crashed smack bang into an elderly woman buying a newspaper and some bird seed. Well, if it isn't Mr. Penguin, cried the woman. She helped Mr. Penguin up and carefully popped Colin's bowler hat back on his head. It was their good friend Edith Hedge who lived in the park and fed the birds. Often, Mr. Penguin and Colin would go and share their lunch with her. Edith was, as always, wearing about 15 different raincoats one on top of the other strapped at the waist with a large belt bag. Sitting on the top of her head was a pigeon. He was called Gordon. And where are my two friends going in such a hurry, she cried, tossing some bird seed up to Gordon, who caught it expertly with his beak. Mr. Penguin puffed out his chest proudly. We are off to the museum for our very first proper adventuring job. We have to find some buried treasure. Oh dear, said Edith, I think you might be out of luck. The museum's been closed since yesterday. I've lived in Cityville all my life and I've never known it to be closed except on Christmas Day, but look, it's shut up tight. She pointed to an enormous font do front doors of the museum. A large sign said, closed until further notice. Very strange if you ask me, continued Edith, fussing with her belt bag. I've known Miss Bones since she was a baby, and she wouldn't close the place unless it was for something very serious indeed. Mr. Penguin was a bit confused. He looked down at Colin, who shrugged as many of his shoulders as he could manage without falling over. This was most odd. Why would Miss Bones call him to the museum if it was closed? Oh, I know what must be going on, he cried in a flash of inspiration. I bet Miss Bones and her brother closed the museum to look for the treasure without lots of people getting in the way. That has got to be it. Edith's face creased up into a smile. It was like looking at a very friendly crinkled paper bag. Well, there we are, she said. You must be what's happening. You are very clever, Mr. Penguin. Now promise you'll come and find me as soon as you can and tell me about this treasure. Of course, said Mr. Penguin, but now we must go. We're running a bit late. He straightened his hat tweaked his bow tie and started off toward the front doors of the museum with Colin scampering madly behind him. Good luck, cried Edith, waving her newspaper at them. Gordon ruffled his feathers encouragingly. The two of them headed back into the park as Mr. Penguin and Colin clambered up the steps of the museum. I'll see you soon for chapter five.